Four men and four women are spending their first night in Biosphere 2. In 1991, eight researchers were sealed inside a futuristic glass complex near Oracle, Arizona, to spend two years living in a self-sustaining habitat. We hope by building Biosphere 2 that we build the first prototype for a total life system that you'd be able to take to another planet. Tonight we put a fascinating look into our future. The developers hailed the experiment as a prototype for colonizing space, and it became a media sensation. But not everything was what it seemed. The people running Biosphere 2 refused to give our NBC cameras access to their property. Do you have something to hide about the past? Before long, the project was haunted by a single question. It looks like something out of science fiction, but how much is science and how much is fiction? More than two decades later, echoes of this question still linger about Biosphere 2. What really happened here? And what happened after all the cameras had moved on? News cameras captured the theatrics as eight men and women were about to be closed inside Biosphere 2 in the fall of 1991. I take my last breaths of this atmosphere knowing that I will take breaths from a different atmosphere from all of you for two years. It had taken four years to build a three-acre, nine-story high complex in the Arizona desert. The goal was for Biosphere 2 to support its inhabitants without help from the outside world. They would grow enough food on their half-acre farm, while the five wilderness areas would naturally recycle their air and water. Jane Pointer and Tabor McCallum were two of the eight so-called Biospherians who planned to live and work inside for two years. When we went into Biosphere 2, the big question was, is this even possible? Can we take something like Biosphere 2, an artificial biosphere, the first ever built, that's on completely different scales from planet Earth, and will it even work? Most people on the Earth thought Biosphere 2 was going to turn to green slime in a matter of weeks, right? You know, it would all just, you can't, you can't just bottle up these complex ecosystems with a bunch of people and expect it to live, right? The unconventional $150 million project was funded by Edward Bass, heir to a Texas oil fortune, and conceived of largely by his friend, a former metallurgist named John Allen. Scientists from respected institutions, like the Smithsonian and the University of Arizona, signed on as paid consultants and helped the project gain credibility. When Secretary of Commerce Robert Mossbacher visited the site, he called it a noble experiment. But the biggest payoff from Biosphere 2 could be a better understanding of our world and of how we might someday live on other worlds. Before we went into the biosphere, I mean, it was insane. We were on the cover of everything. We were on all the major talk shows. I, I mean, it, it was nutty. But within weeks of the experiment's launch, and with the media spotlight still shining, problems began to surface at Biosphere 2. Jane Pointer had to leave Biosphere 2 when she accidentally sliced off the tip of one of her fingers. When she returned, she brought back a whole bunch of supplies. Biosphere 2 officials reluctantly revealed that information. That was incredibly frustrating. It started hitting a media across the world that the entire experiment had been negated because I had come out, for one thing, and I had taken a duffel bag in, which apparently was full of food and heaven knows what I'd taken in. But it, none of it was true. All that was in there was like some drawings and a couple of things like that in it. Regardless of what was in the bag, Pointer's exit had compromised the closed experiment. And it was further compromised when the Biospherians had to supplement their diet with grains and beans from their seed stock. While their home video shows them feasting, the truth is the Biospherians have had trouble growing enough food to sustain themselves. Tabor McCallum has lost 54 pounds, though he says he's okay. You know, I really do like my new weight much more. But the most damning news was that to protect themselves from dangerously high levels of carbon dioxide in their enclosed environment, the Biospherians relied on a machine that had been secretly installed before the experiment even started. They ordered and installed a CO2 scrubber, which is a machine that you use on a submarine. Mark Cooper broke the story. It made the entire experiment worthless. Whatever value it had, I don't think it had any value in the first place. In the months before the Biosphere 2 launch, 
Cooper's exposés revealed that most of the Biospherians had little academic training as scientists, and that their project was born of a startling past. There was a book written about cults back in 1969, and there's a whole chapter about these guys on their original commune. Back in the 60s and 70s, some of the people running Biosphere 2 had a little theater group and lived together on a commune. Their leader was a fellow who went by the nickname Johnny Dolphin. He is John Allen, and it is his philosophies that inspired Biosphere 2. According to Cooper, the real story behind Biosphere 2 was Allen's driving philosophy that the Earth was doomed and that mankind could achieve cosmic immortality by building biospheres in outer space. The media is running around with its hair on fire saying, oh, this is a great thing because this is going to help us understand the environment, help us save the environment, help us save the world. In fact, these people had already made the decision that Earth was doomed and that they were not God's chosen people, but they were their own chosen people to propagate humanity on another planet. Biospherians Jane Pointer and Tabor McCallum say space colonization was only a distant goal and that Cooper's characterizations of the group and their work were overblown. You take the definition of a cult and, you know, many companies and organizations fit it. You know, yes, we were a very, very tight-knit group with some very, very charismatic leaders. Um, you know, in some way, that's what it takes to do something as totally off the charts as bias for two. By the end of the two-year mission, the Biospherians, in the words of Jane Pointer, had suffocated, starved, and gone mad. The group split into factions, disagreed over scientific goals, and barely spoke to one another. Nevertheless, they put aside their differences to reemerge triumphantly for the cameras. But the looming question remained. Many are still asking, was it good science? It was an experiment. This was something that nobody ever tried before, so things were going to go wrong. And as soon as things did go wrong, I mean, it really did fall. In 1994, Ed Bass brought in new management and ended manned missions at Biosphere 2. John Allen returned to his ranch in New Mexico. And Jane Pointer and Tabor McCallum got married that summer on the Biosphere lawn. As for the Biosphere 2 story, it simply faded away, popping up only occasionally and in less than flattering company. Welcome to Biodome. Welcome to the future. Viva Los Biodome. Viva Los Biodome. Biosphere 2 failed as a human habitat, and the Biospherians are long gone. But 20 years later, the building is still standing. Today, it is owned by the University of Arizona, and with continuing financial support from Ed Bass, the university has found new ways to utilize the facility for scientific research. Welcome to Biosphere 2. Its design as a prototype for colonizing space has today made Biosphere 2 the world's largest earth science laboratory. Most laboratory research and growth chambers that you have are you know, something the size of a, a refrigerator, or you're working outside in a natural scenario where you have all of the variability, but you have very little control capabilities, and biosphere is this intermediate step. So we can change the temperature, we can change the humidity, we can change the amount of rainfall to help predict what might happen to rainforests under different conditions. Since 1996, Research conducted at Biosphere 2 has produced nearly 150 papers published in scientific journals. In the late 1990s, researchers from Columbia University used the Biosphere 2 ocean to make the first links between rising carbon dioxide levels, ocean acidification, and reduced coral growth. Now, the University of Arizona is building a massive landscape observatory to study how climate change might affect water resources. We don't have zip lines running through biosphere. We don't have, you know, a roller coaster going around. Um, you know, it's, it's really sort of science at a very fundamental level with the backdrop of an engineering marvel. 